Let's talk about this news because this is the first time we've gotten a chance to kind of go through this. You decided to do a spinoff instead of a split after mulling it over. Um, what pushed you that direction? What, what made you decide that? Yeah, we, we did more than mull it. I mean, we studied it and examined it a long time and very carefully. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think one of the things that we concluded, we started this transaction because we wanted to drive shareholder value. And we felt that getting the equity structured in the way we did would have the best chance of making that happen. After we went through what would be required to go down the split side, well, it had really attractive aspects from my point of view, which would be cutting down the share count, which is something over time I'd obviously like to do. The cost of doing it would have taken money out of certain shareholders' pockets to execute it. And, um, you know, look, we have to accept that the markets are smart. I think our shareholders are smart and give them the choice to do what they want to do. And it's a, it's a very clean path to executing. It goes very quickly which will allow us to complete the transaction in a really rapid period of time, which is good. So I think, by and large, our primary goal was to make sure we just let the market and the shareholder decide where they wanted the value. And look, coming out of this, they have a great opportunity. They're going to own two stocks. And I think both have great prospects. They're a little different in characteristic as to growth and what they do, but the shareholder can make that decision. And getting the upside of what I think is going to be an incredibly strong company, Warner Brothers Discovery, and what David's going to be able to do with that equity and watch it grow and get full fair market value for it will be a good thing for those shareholders who choose to stay in it. Uh, the, the market didn't give a great reaction to the news. It was a 5% drop in the shares um, on the day of the announcement. Is that because the dividend cut to, to 111 from 208? Was that bigger than people were anticipating? What do you think happened? I, I think there was a little bit of adjustment that went on once the dividend number settled in. Because, as you know, we, because we had not decided whether we were going to spin or split, we couldn't state a dividend number. We can only give a range in, in total payout of what we we're going to uh, dedicate to the dividend. So I think there was a little bit of an adjustment around that, although, my gosh, the yield is still a wonderful yield. You know, it's one of the best in, in corporate America right now. 8.9% yeah, this morning. So, um, you know, I think over time, as the fundamentals settle in, we'll see the stock adjust. And, uh, you know, if, if I step back and, and think about what's going to happen over the coming, there'll be a little volatility. There's going to be people picking sides and where they want to go. And so... We expect there's going to be some days where we see, you know, a little bit of movement. And, but over time, intrinsic value tends to be recognized by the market. And I think there's a lot of intrinsic value. I mean, there were analysts that said they were glad that you went further with the dividend to give you more flexibility and, and uh, pay down debt, and have pay down debt yeah. build out 5G. And they were glad that it was that part of the range. They may not be retirees, but 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 people that are interested in the law. And there's people that. You know, some people don't even like dividend-paying stocks, so you're somewhere in there where you do have things to do with that money that maybe are better spent it's, with it. It's, it's exactly the issue, Joe. I mean, we're sitting at this moment where um, I know Jeff was talking a little bit about what the future is right before I came on. And, you know, when you think about the dawn of connectivity that we're in that's going to enable many of the things that he's addressing and what the future is, uh, our company is the fabric that a lot of that innovation runs on. And uh, we believe this is an opportunity for us to invest at a level and drive some improved returns. And I'd, I'd much rather be pouring some of that cash back into the infrastructure of this business that returns at a higher level than what we pay out on the dividend. And so it's time to make that transition for this company. And we've got a lot of great opportunities and great assets to actually drive better value. Does that mean you have to change over more of the shareholder base, though, if it was a lot of retail investors who were kind of counting on a big dividend? What's your ideal? Look, I expect, I expect the shareholder base will change a bit over time, but I don't expect it's going to fundamentally change. As I just said, I mean, we're sitting here at the top of the dividend paying pool. So those that want to yield and can still come here and look at it and, and say that this is a good place to be, if that's my motivation. Um, so I expect we're still going to have a dynamic of an income-oriented investor and a retail base that's going to be very, very important to us. But I also think we can operate and execute this business better and get some more institutionals back into this stock. And, uh, you know, we've got a great story and we're executing in a way that's going to make that happen.